Basically, a bottleneck is the slowest step in a process. The machine having trouble keeping pace. To find the bottleneck, go and have a look at where the inventories pile up and from where the machine are starved from upstream supplies. There is your bottleneck. Well, it's not always that simple. I am Christian Homan. Welcome to this episode. Here is a case with a young engineer, Kevin, visiting his new employer's premises. He arrives just before noon and while walking through the production hall notices this snapshot. All machines are up and running. We can see the green light and hear their soft humming. Working process is quite high in front of every machine from 1 to 5. Working progress is comparatively low after machine 5. Kevin makes a mental note that machine 5 could be the bottleneck. The next morning, shortly after work begun at 8 o'clock, walking the same hall again, he notices this situation. All machines are up and running. Work in progress is very high in front of machine 5, very low after machine 5 and somewhat lower than the previous day before machine 5 except for machine 1, receiving raw material at will from the warehouse. Around 3 o'clock in the afternoon, the situation evolved into this one. All machines still up and running. Machine 5 managed to catch up, probably because up front it opposed as inventory are rather low in front of machine 5, and the following. Machine 5 definitely qualifies as a bottleneck in Kevin's mind. Question, is Kevin right? Take time to think for yourself. You may pause the video. Would Kevin have visited the production hall between 5 and 8 pm, he would have seen this. The hall is not lit except for a single spot. No machine running except machine number 4. A huge inventory sits in front of machine number 4. In fact, machine number 4 is a true bottleneck, the slowest machine in this process. The production manager has it working over time in order to catch up with the backlog. Indeed, when production has resumed the next morning, around 8.30 am, the situation is like that. Machine number 4 is again supplied by upstream process. Machine 5 has now half the day to flush the pile of work in progress waiting to be processed. It looks like machine 5 is the bottleneck, but is not. In the same time, inventory will again pile up in front of machine number 4. It will be later worked over time. What lessons learned for Kevin? Take a moment to reflect. You may even pause the video to give you time to reflect. Kevin should have questioned his assumptions. There is maybe more than one reason for which the situation is like this, not only Machine 5 being the bottleneck. Kevin should have captured some data, like for example machine's cycle time. Kevin should simply have asked, the production manager would have told him right away where the bottleneck is. Kevin should have remembered that a few snapshots do not make a movie, they do not tell the whole story. Generally speaking, since situations in factory grew fuzzier, more complex and volatile than when the advice about finding the bottlenecks with Q and inventories was a good one, keep in mind that it is still often heard, but not that simple anymore. A final word about letting the bottleneck work over time. Is this a good or at least an acceptable solution? Well, yes, as long as no other better and cheaper alternative exists. It is one simple way to elevate the constraint, meaning exploiting more of its limited capacity. You have noticed, however, that this way of getting extra capacity sends work waves with ripple effect downstreams. Our story does not tell if there is any adverse effect, but it is meant to be a simple story about finding the bottleneck. If you like this episode, give it a thumb up and share it. You may also like to share your own thoughts in the comments. Thank you for your interest and see you soon for another video.